Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Welcome back to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, day number nine. Our last day here, at least for this round. We have another round coming up in just a few weeks, so don't be too sad. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and a big good morning or good afternoon to everyone joining us live on Behance. We've got Rusty and Lorena and Leva and Nuno and Jason and Anna and everyone else, and Mars from the Philippines. If you are joining us live, let me know where you're tuning in from. We're streaming today from lovely Los Angeles. Next week, I'll be back in, no, we're in San Francisco. We're in San Francisco this week. Next week, I'll be in Los Angeles. I'm getting my days mixed up. I'll be in Los Angeles later today. Very confusing. Um, but yeah, hello everyone. And uh, you know, I'm sad. I'm always sad when the Daily Creative Challenge comes to an end, but we do have another one very soon, so. Stick around for that. So today we have some fun stuff coming up. Let me hop over to my screen. This is the Daily Creative Challenge landing page, behance.net slash Daily Creative Challenge. And this is where you would typically find all your challenges. You would find the register button at the top, but because this is the last day, it's now a Slack button. But you can join us on Slack. Uh, we will be keeping that Slack open all the way up until the next round of Daily XD Challenges. And just to go over some of the, you know, how this thing works, every day you're gonna receive a challenge and every day you're gonna join me at 8.30 in the morning Pacific time to kick things off. Then you're gonna use Adobe XD to design and prototype whatever that challenge is. And then you have until today to submit all the challenges. And of course, you know, this is really, this, this, it's a floating deadline, right? It's not a competition, you're not winning anything. We do this to help you build up your skills, maybe learn something new. You may not have ever used Adobe XD before. So this is the perfect opportunity to make something awesome. And if you need a few extra days, I was actually browsing Behance this morning and I saw a few of the challenges from, I think two challenges ago, start trickling in. So, you know, people are always polishing things up and getting them ready to present to clients. So if you need a few extra days or a few extra weeks, definitely take some time. Grab XD for free, join us on Slack, and then here are all the challenges. So we started last Tuesday, um, and it, this was a progressive challenge. And we wanna know in the chat or on Twitter or in Slack, what you think of these challenges, starting from you know, the very early stages of a website or whatever it might be, and kind of building up. So last week we started with a navigation bar for a pet store website, and we wanted to solve some pain points about users landing on these pages, not really knowing what to click on, where to go, where to find deals and things like that. We progressed to the marketing real estate, which kind of dealt with banners at the top. So it showed Black Friday deals, that sort of thing. We went to top products and we used the Google Sheets plugin. That was really cool. If you missed that stream, definitely go back and check it out. User support. So we worked with overlays in Adobe XD, simplified purchase flow, subscribe and save, rate experience, mobile experience, and then today we're finishing off with sharing. So we're gonna be looking at publishing for review, publishing for development, we're gonna be touching on Behance, and then we're also gonna be looking at a ton of entries. In Slack, if I hop over here, uh, Sam posted yesterday a link so you can submit some of your projects that you've been working on over the last two weeks, and we're gonna be taking, a I haven't looked at any of these yet, so it's gonna be a surprise. And I will note that I'm only gonna be taking a look at the ones that relate to this project. So if you submitted anything else that's not related, I'm probably gonna close it for now. We'll find time at some point to look at uh, portfolios from random things. We also do that on Adobe Live from time to time every Thursday. So uh, uh, Mary's saying progressive challenges are much better and more realistic. All right, progressive challenge is an awesome idea. Okay, good. Now. Quick question, because we, you know we were we, we've been debating a few things, throwing a few ideas around internally. Would you want to see one long progressive challenge over the course of two weeks, or would you like to see maybe two progressive challenges, one the first week and one the second week? So we're you know we're inter we're tinkering some with some ideas internally, but we'd love to hear your your uh, feedback, and we're also going to send a link, a survey afterwards, so you can really give out all your feedback and be honest, brutally honest. All right. Uh, Abe is also a big fan of the progressive challenge. Okay, good. So maybe we'll stick with that. 
Alrighty, so what do we have planned for today? Well, we're gonna take a look at portfolios afterwards, but we're gonna touch on some sharing. So let's go to Adobe XD. And here we are in XD, kind of where we left off. Um, you know, this is the homepage that we started with. We, we got the navigation bar and all of your designs are much better than mine, but um, you know, Anna says two challenges are better. Need an hour long of Howard. No, I an hour long is just way too much of me. I can't talk for an hour long. Uh, we've got the purchase flow, subscribe and save, the rate experience, the mobile design. So we want to start really sharing some of the stuff with, uh, you know, some of our clients, our stakeholders, and things like that. And I've, as I've mentioned, I did have a few additional uh, artboards that I left in Los Angeles. I didn't save to the cloud, bad me, but you know, uh, it happens. So we might want to actually start publishing this for review. And so let me make sure some of the stuff is wired up. So it looks like the uh, this button here goes to this screen here and complete purchase does not go anywhere yet. So we want to make sure that this goes over here to uh, this screen here. So if we tap on this, we let's we'll do a simple transition. We don't have to worry too much about auto animate on the web because there's typically not that many animations for web sites. Uh, you know, mobile, you might have a few extra here and there, but we're going to do a very simple transition. Uh, we'll just do a none, which basically will just cut to the next screen. One challenge quality over quantity. Okay, I like it. Uh, and we have another purchase button down here. I'm going to link that one up. Boop, right there. And these all look like they probably all link up, which is nice. And these do use the drag trigger, which is now supported on the web. So you'll see that in a second. And we're going to unlink this one. Great. All right. So at this point, I may want to actually start sharing this with a client. I might be working with this pet store and they w might want to see where things are at. So what I'm going to do is either from design mode or prototype mode, I'm going to go to the share menu at the top. And before I do that, it's good to note that you want to make sure to mark your the, the first screen as your home screen. And it is marked right here. But you might, you may, you know, there might be another artboard, maybe this one down here, maybe the mobile site that was marked as the home screen, that will be the screen that your prototype starts off with. So you may not want that. So you'll go over here, click on the artboard. Boop, there we go. That is now my home screen. <laughs> Howard's hour of boops. I like it, Michael. So I'm going to press share at the top right. I'm going to go to share for review. You have two options, share for review or share for development. I'm going to go for a review right now. Press that. And I want anyone with the link to be able to view this. I can also, if I'm working with, you know, strict NDAs or I'm concerned about privacy, you can generate private links, put passwords, that sort of thing. But I'm okay with anyone finding this. And it's really anyone who I send the link to. No one's going to randomly stumble on it uh, in Google, right? Um, I'm going to allow comments, allow hotspot hints. I do want to show navigation controls. Perfect. And I'm going to update the link because I've already previously published it. If you did not publish it, it'll just say create public link at the bottom. So right now it's taking all those elements, throwing them up to the cloud, all the images, all the interactions and everything. And there we go. We now have three options. The first option is to copy the embed code. And I'll show you this in a moment. You'll be able to post this directly on Behance and people will be able to interact with it. You can copy the link or you can open it in a browser. So let's go ahead and open it in a browser. And here we go. And this will allow your client to really jump in there and interact with this prototype as you can in Adobe XD. And you can just click anywhere. If you're not sure where to click, you can click anywhere and you're noticing that button at the bottom highlights in blue to let me know that that button is clickable. I can scroll. Right. If I had the overlay linked up or if I had a time transition for these banners at the top, that those would also animate. But I'm going to click on this button. It's going to take me to the checkout experience. I can scroll down again. Maybe I'll want subscribe and save. I'll click on that. There's a little bit of auto animate going on there. I can scroll down, complete the purchase. My checkout experience was wonderful. Subscribe and save, not so much. Boop to purchase, because of course, and got to give a 10 for the cats and complete survey. And we got, we've got we gotten to the end. And I can always you know use the arrows at the bottom to scroll around, go back to the home screen. And if I'm a client putting them on my art director hat, I may want to 
Uh, Carlos is asking, how long does that link last? Yeah, it should be uh, unlimited unless you unpublish it. So it, it doesn't really expire unless you go in and manually either make it private or you just unpublish it completely. Um, so here, I, if I'm you know, putting on my art director hat, I may want to leave a comment for somebody. So let's say I want maybe the menu bar at the top to be fixed. So I can grab this pin over here, drag it onto my artboard right there and fix navigation bar and submit. And all of a sudden that pin is there. So as the designer, I'm gonna get a notification on my Creative Cloud app that a comment has been left. I can go check it out and then I can hop back over to Adobe XD and make that change if I wanted to. So I can just jump in here, go back to design mode, grab my navigation bar, make sure it's at the very top of my layer stack. I also wanna make sure my search bar is up there. That's probably part of my navigation bar. There we go. I lost my logo too. Where'd my logo go? There it is. Put my logo in there. And then with the navigation bar selected, I'm just going to press fix position when scrolling. Boop. There we go. Save it. And you'll notice if I press play, I now have a fixed navigation bar. And I can just go in, share for review, update that link. It's going to send that back to the cloud and then my client will be able to see that fixed revision. So that's all fun and games. But once it comes time to actually develop this thing, you may be working with a developer or your client may be working with a developer and they need to provide certain assets so that they can get going. And that's kind of where Mark for export comes into play. Now, one of the new features in the latest version of XD, so when you import an image into XD, it just it's going to assume automatically, it's gonna automatically mark images, imported images for export, which is great because it assumes that if you bring an image in, you'll probably want to provide it at some point to a client. But if you don't have some of that stuff marked, you can always go in and you'll notice there's two places now. There's either on the right, there's this mark for export checkbox. <laughs> And Michael's saying, random thing, just in case you didn't know, Safari on Mac OS now supports favicons on bookmarks and tabs. Yes. I just noticed you had a lot of tabs on. Yeah, so the tabs here are all um, portfolios that we're gonna be checking out today. So um, you can also go in your layers panel and click on the first icon right here and that will mark a, a layer for export. So if I wanna go in maybe, let's say mark the dog face, I can make sure I can do that. I do have it marked right there. Maybe I want the live help button marked for export. There we go. I should probably also name these layers live help. And I've got my account button right here, user. Boop. There we go. And my cart icon right there. So now I've started to mark a few of these, uh, ec these assets for export. I may also want to mark all these images within this repeat grid. Now, the cool thing is about this is I don't have to go into every single one and mark all of them for export. I just have to go into one of them, press mark for export, and it's gonna automatically mark all of the non-repeated elements. So if I did have, let's say this repeat grid and I had, I just dragged it down. You're noticing some of these elements, these images repeat themselves. There won't be three of these dog bowls. There'll just be one of them. So it'll mark all of these for export, which is nice. And I definitely wanna mark this cat. I do have this cat. This one's good. All right, so now we're pretty good. We're, our developers are feeling good. We wanna make sure that they have everything that we need, they, that they need to start developing this thing. So back up to the share menu. We're gonna to go to share for development this time. And you're gonna notice a very same flow, or a very similar flow. You can invite anyone with a link let me give this a title, pet store. I do want to export for web. If I was working with iOS or Android, I can definitely select that. And I do want to include all the assets for download. And in this case, there are 29 of them. Don't want a password, I'm going to create the link. So just like before, it's taking all this fun stuff, sending it up to the cloud. And it may take a little bit longer because some of these images are pretty large and developers want the full resolution images. So, you know, those are going up there. And what's neat about this, and you'll see this in a moment, is that developers, if you have um, you know, S SVGs, they'll be able to download those vector images as well. So here we go. We're gonna open it in our browser. And by default, you're going to see kind of what, what it looks like in 
uh, you know, Adobe XD. So you can see all your artboards and all the transitions between the artboards, just like this. I can click, click on any of them to see all the elements here. We also give developers access to all the colors that are on this artboard and also all the character styles that you're using. Obviously, I'm using some weird character styles in some of these, but yours would probably be a lot more organized so it wouldn't go on and on. Probably wouldn't have Ariel as well. Probably just have the, you know, character styles that you defined for your project. There's also interactions down here, but the most important thing I would say are the marked assets. So developers can just go in, grab individual ones or all of them, and they can download, just like down here, they can download the vector assets as SVGs, PNGs, or PDFs. Of course, PNGs won't be vector, but if they just want a PNG instead of a vector file, they can do that. And the bitmaps as PNGs or PDFs. So that's sharing for development. And then finally, the thing I wanna go, they can also access things like uh, viewport size, uh, design size and that sort of thing, and dimensions, spacing, there's a lot in there, and there's many videos online that you can watch that will go over that entire process. The last thing I wanna to touch on is publishing to Behance. Now, we're not gonna get super in depth because I'll, I will take a look at many of your projects, and probably many of your projects are nicely laid out, much better than mine are. But if you want to publish this thing on Behance as a working prototype, back under the share menu, you go to share for review. You're gonna copy the embed code, this first link right here. Boop, there we go. So it's now copied to the clipboard. You can go over to Behance. You can create a brand new project. And in this case, uh, you would probably start adding images and text and that sort of thing. But when it gets time to actually embed your working prototype, you just press on embed right here and you just paste. Press embed. And in a second, it's loading in, it's a pretty large prototype. And you can kind of see it piecing in, there it is. So there is our working prototype. You can just scroll through, you'll be able to click. Where's the button, there it is. And this is all being embedded on Behance. And if I preview it, you're gonna see, I can click on this to in actually interact with it. And it's pretty cool. And then from here, you probably wanna add images and your design system and things like that. And very quickly, I'm gonna show you how that could be done. So if you go over here, let's say you want an image, we'll create a very quick image for the banner at the top. Drag out an artboard, drag out a rectangle so I can house my image. And we'll grab, we'll grab this cat again because it's so weirdly cute. Put that there, we'll grab some text. Uh, pet store, this is not very original. Let me know in the chat what we should name this pet store. Give me a very creative name for a pet store. Because this, because pet store is obviously not a very creative name for a pet store. Pet store and then underneath, website redesign. This I'll make, let's say medium, make it a little bit smaller. Whoops. Perfect. Again, not very pretty. All of yours are definitely a lot nicer than mine, but you can start creating banners and things like that. Um, it is a wizard cat, yes. So you can create a lot of things like that. And then directly from Adobe XD, you can right click, uh, export selected, or if you have marked assets, you can export bash, save that to your computer. And then you can upload those directly on Behance right here. So you just go in here, upload media, pop it in and you'll be good to go. And finally, the last thing I wanna to touch on before we actually start looking at some portfolios is the Angle plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins. So you might be at a point where you wanna showcase some of your mobile designs, but you don't wanna just showcase them looking like this. You want the, to put them inside of a device frame. And that's where the Angle plugin comes into place. So if you go to plugins, go to discover plugins, type in Angle, and there is the plugin right there. I've already have it installed, but go ahead and install it. And on their website, you can download some free mockups. And I think you have to enter your e email address or just press the download button and it'll download to your computer and you'll get a file like this. So you can use things like 3D mockups of an iPhone or just standard straight on images or mockups just like this. And let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna grab this one here, copy it paste it on this document, move it over here to the side. 
There we go. Now it probably came in as a linked asset. So I wanna make sure it's unlinked. Otherwise I won't be able to run the plugin. And on this one, I'm actually gonna duplicate this over. I'm gonna rename this mobile. And I'm just going to, just so it doesn't break the plugin, I'm going to reduce the size of the artboard. So it's just the size of the screen itself and not anything else below it. Good, that looks good. All right, so we got this artboard ready to go. It's called mobile. And this is what we want to display inside of this 3D mockup. So in this, I'm probably, I am probably don't need, whoops. I probably don't need all this stuff. Let me just get rid of some of this. Don't need it. Perfect. So inside of this 3D mockup in particular, and you can get these things pretty much anywhere. If I just hold down command or control and click, it'll dive directly into that layer. And I wanna make sure that I have the screen layer selected. You can see that right here. This is the screen layer. And with that selected, I'm gonna to go to plugins, angle and apply mockup. And in this screen, it will allow me to choose which uh, artboard I want to place inside of this 3D mockup. Pixel density, I'm gonna keep at one times. Quality is best. And if I need to rotate it or flip it, I can do that here, but I'm gonna keep it as default. And I'm gonna apply. And right now it's basically taking all the elements of that uh, artboard, the mobile artboard, flattening them, and then placing them on an angle and in a perspective inside of here. Now, of course, that that mock-up was not, or that uh, artboard was not, de de it's Friday. It was not designed for the iPhone 10, so, We've got the notch issue. Of course, you would probably design it for you know whatever screen you're doing, um, but you know it is what it is. So, but that's pretty cool, right? If I did have an iPhone 8 mock-up, I can do that. Or if I wanted to spend some extra time, I can very easily change the design to accommodate that lovely notch at the top. But that's a very easy and quick way of getting 3D mockups done directly in Adobe XD. And then you can grab this, you can upload it to Behance, you can change the background, whatever you want. So if I wanted, let's say, uh, a more of a lighter background, I can very easily do that. Save this out, publish it on Behance, and I've got a pretty cool looking mockup at the top or somewhere else in my page. So that's a little bit about sharing. We've covered share for review, share for development, and we've also uh, you know, did a little bit of Behance work with 3D mockups, which is fun. Uh, now to wrap things up for this lovely Friday, we're gonna start looking at some prototypes. So these are in no particular order. I just went through the form that all of you submitted. And if yours is not there, definitely get in for next time. Uh, we're, we'll post the form around uh, every try we'll try to do it every single time again I have not looked at any of these so we're gonna take a look and if this if it doesn't relate to this week's challenge which is the pet store I'll probably take a look at it at some other time so here we go uh, Kelly is asking do you have to adjust each screen for the phone size yeah probably you probably do and Aaron need to install yeah you definitely need to install that plugin it's pretty cool um, Adobe might end up putting a menu bar on XD for Windows. So there's some UWP, I think it's UWP, the Windows guidelines, they don't really allow for actual menu bars at the top. That's why there isn't one. That's why it's kind of hidden under a hamburger. Um, but we are working on a solution for plugins to make them a lot more accessible for Windows users. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, Windows guidelines, that's also why Android Live previewing doesn't work. There's a lot of restrictions and guidelines and things like that. It's no fun, but we got to follow them. All right. So this one is from Vincent and this is called Meowsy, I believe. Interesting um, script at the top. And he's got a little preview. Cool. I love videos like this. All right, purr, nice carousel at the top, chat overlay. That was cute. Super in depth. And I love when users kind of embed their working videos, which you can record from XD on the Mac directly inside of real world devices like this. I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Love it. He's got some colors and logos. And, and you know, if you are putting something together for potential clients uh, or to attract work and things like that, 
Definitely throw your design system in here, your colors, your logos, your character styles. They love seeing that. And also your progress is huge. And that's one of the cool things about these um, XD daily challenges, especially the progressive ones, is it gives you the opportunity to really show your work from start to finish. Show day one, show day nine, and how everything in between and how you got to that point. And clients love looking at that stuff. Content, top sellers, nice. Simplified purchase flow. If I was a prospective client, I would love seeing all this stuff because it's super in depth. And there's also a video on the mobile prototype. Nice, which is very similar to the desktop view, but it's got one image instead of several across. And he's modified everything using responsive resize or completely redesigning it for a mobile screen, which looks really nice. Uh, Name is asking, how do you record a video in XD? So if you're on the Mac, you can do it directly from the share menu. There's a record video button. If you're on Windows, again, because of restrictions and things like that, you have to use the built-in Windows recording software called Game Bar, which I think is Windows G, and that'll record a video. Even though XD is not a game, per se, uh, it'll still record XD and you can, you know, crop it and all that fun stuff. But we're trying to work on it, but restrictions, you know, it is what it is. Awesome. And then he's got a working prototype at the bottom, which basically shows all this stuff in action. So great job, Vincent. Next one we've got is Young Shim, who put together this Harvest Source. I like that logo. It's very cute. It's very simple and minimalistic, but nice. All right, great navigation bar with a little bit of a curve, which is kind of cool. It's a nice, nice modern touch on it. Featured deals using actual pet products, which is cool. And we've got a video. All right, so that was, let me go back quickly. We've got the subscribe and save pop-up, so you can sign up to get 25% off. Always nice. Most of us just dismiss that anyway, but you know. They're always good to have, especially for marketing purposes. Yeah, Kelly loves the cow. I do too, I think it was super cute. Ah, I like the little cart at the top right where it just kind of pops up so it doesn't necessarily have to go to a, a completely different screen. You can very easily see your cart. It's go. Cool. it got a little animation there. And then you can go to a full cart when you're ready to check out. Nice, whoops. And then he's broken things down here at the bottom. Subscribe, pop up. Awesome. Great job, Young Shim. All right, next one we've got is the name I can't, I can never pronounce. I know he's in the chat. Um, and I know he, he spelled it out phonetically for me yesterday. This shouldn't be very difficult, but it, Seltzen. I probably did it wrong again. I'm terrible with names. I apologize. I know you're here watching. I saw you in here. I apologize, but let's take a look at your work. So this is for a pet supply store. And he's got this super cute little dog right up here. Oh, these are just so cute. Black Friday deals just got even cuter. Yes, they did, didn't they? It's got an interesting little pop-up over here, a little advertisement for the mobile app, which is great. There, there he is. Yep. Yum yum, yes. Top deals. This is a nice little area. So you have some, uh, you know, bigger some products that are a little bit bigger than others, and then some top trending deals. And he's got everything broken down by day, which is really nice. I love seeing uh, all the pro all nine projects in one. Uh, did I get it right? I got it right. Yes. Um, yeah, I love seeing all the project all the challenges in one project. Oh, this is cool. So you can you can basically click on a preview of the top trending products from the homepage and you can see a little pop-up or a modal of um, more details of that product. So you don't have to go to a completely different product page. I like that. Thank you. And this cute little dog in the middle just thanking you for your purchase. Shopping cart. This cat just staring into your soul and a video. Little overlay at the bottom. Quick view, yeah, that's what it's called, quick view. A 
All right, I'm gonna zoom through this just so we don't waste too much time. But it looks like it pre pretty much goes through all the interactions that we've kind of seen at the top. PayPal and Apple Pay, those are always good. Great experience, you can win a $250 pet supply gift card. Who doesn't want that? Nice. And a working prototype, good job. All right, next one we've got is Brandon. I think I saw a brand, there he is, Brandon Whittle. He is in here as well. Pet Supply, also a pet supply store. It's a drop, supply drop for pets. Ah, okay, I like the, I like the logo, it's neat. And I probably wanna know, uh, Brandon, as you're putting this together, did you create this logo yourself? Because I think this is really cool. If you did, definitely throw, you know, definitely include that bits of information in a project like this. Panda Peers, find your panda friends with our new app. I like this. Although I would say that the orange may not necessarily work in this situation. Maybe just do a green, kind of like maybe sample a color from the background or just do a black. The orange is kind of sticking out to me. Maybe it's just my screen, but it's sticking out a little bit. But I do like the orange here. It definitely works here. All right. Add it to the cart. Again, a nice little uh, modal that pops up. Shopping cart is super clean. Love it. And what does that say? Let's see. Okay, nice. So there's a little pop-up. If you, Assuming we'd had hover in Adobe XD, which is in the works, you'd be able to hover over something like this and see um, you know, a little pop-up like this. It kind of tells you what the uh, subscribe and save feature is. But in the meantime, you can just use a tap trigger. Should be called Pug G. I like that, Michael. Love it. And then an interactive prototype. Great, great job, Brandon. Next one we've got, this one may not be working. Let's refresh. Nope. This is a great prototype. Beautiful. Um, that one doesn't look like it was working. All right, next one. Uh, this one doesn't have a name, but if this is yours, definitely uh, you know leave it in the chat. We can cycle through some of the ooh, little cute mouse and a cat. I would probably say that those um, time transitions are a little bit too quick, so slow those down. You know, each one should probably be displayed for anywhere between two and four seconds. So try, try slowing that duration down a little bit. Good boy treats. All right, you can subscribe. To save the world, subscribe. Now, what I would say is watch your colors a little bit. It's blending in with the, the dog in the background. It's a little bit difficult to see. And for something like this, you probably want to go with a perfect ellipse instead of a, more of an oval shaped. And then for the subscribe section, there, I, I see there's a subscribe button, but it might be difficult for people to understand what subscribe means. So maybe a little bit of information to let them know what they might be saving, are they saving 10% or 5% or whatever it might be, um, that'll help quite a bit. Oh, where should we send it? Okay, great, and complete purchase. That might be it. Awesome, great job. Next we've got Mario. We got pets. Love it, I love these little images at the top. Dogs, cats, fishes, reptiles, insects, my shopping cart. Great little message button at the bottom, shipping address. I kind of, I'm kind of digging the, um, the, you know, the diagonal shape over here. It's kind of cute. Payment process. I would say for things like this, you probably don't need, if you look closely, there's a bit of a drop shadow. You probably don't need drop shadows. Anytime you don't need, anytime you can, try not to use a drop shadow. It's kind of, it's one of those weird things these days where if you don't need a drop shadow, don't use it. Sometimes you do need it, but you know, in this case, like here, you might need a drop shadow or a very subtle border because it's white on white, but under the text, you probably don't need it. Based on what you selected, shows you some recommended products, great. More shopping cart. I would, yeah. I would say Laura Mipsim for this might work, but try again, it's kind of like a drop shadow. When you, 
If you can, try not to use lorem ipsum, just so the client or the viewer can really get an understanding of what this section is. Can I get a dress for insects? Insects, yeah, that'd be cool. Little, uh, little spider running around in a dress, that'd be great. All right. And a video and a working, oh, this was the overlay, great. This is a long project. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. I would almost say that this is probably a little bit too long, right? It just keeps going and going and going. Um, for things like that, that's when you wanna get a working prototype in there or a video. Um, and I've seen a lot of the same screens, like a lot of the large images of shopping carts over and over and over again. So probably reduce those as much as you can, just so you're not leaving people scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. But otherwise, really cool stuff. All right, next we've got uh, Mary, who I did see in the chat somewhere. There she is. Uh, yeah, she says, tool tips in XD would be awesome. Yes, once Hover is here, you'll be able to make things like tool tips and stuff like that. All right, so pet store case study, saturated colors, lowercase text, whimsical images. All righty, pet swell. I mean, who doesn't love a dog in a Christmas hat? It's great. Cool, all right. I the only thing I would probably say is the, um, the add to cart button. It's, I get what you're going for. It's probably a little bit in the way of some of the images. So maybe either move it to the side or move it down just a little bit or make it a little bit smaller. There's also room at the top left. You can maybe add it, but it's kind of getting in the way of some of these super cute images. Good boy treats. All right, got some reviews down at the bottom. A subscribe and save tool tip, always nice. Sale ends and, and one of the cool things you can do in XD is using uh, time transition, you can actually make things like this move. So you can have like an animated countdown timer. Nice. All right, check out experience. Great. Way to go, I love the um, little acronyms, WTG. Oh, she went with the smiley faces and the sad faces. I love that. And a gift for thanks. I love that. There was a there's an application I designed uh, for my old my previous job where, at the very end of it, I did had like a random gif um, related to like thanks or good job or whatever. I love using gifts when I can. Mobile experience, awesome, and an interactive prototype. Very cool. Great job, Mary. And this one is from Anarag, who I have seen, I don't know if he's here in chat, but I have seen him on Twitter once in a while. And this is called Groom Yours. It's got the menu items at the top, little overlay that pops up, this cute little squirrel. Can we use gradients in XD? Yes, you can. So if you have a, a shape selected, if you go to the fill uh, picker on the right, and once that pops up, you'll uh, instead of solid color, you'll just go to, oh, Anarag is here. Uh, you'll just go to, instead of solid color, you go to gradient, you need to do uh, linear or radial. So that's a thing. Uh, what's that? Subscribe and say, that's cute. So kind of you know, looking at the um, little rabbit, I think it's a rabbit, on the left, it definitely makes me wonder what this is. So it, it kind of, it stops me from just closing this out quickly. So it's, it's an interesting way of uh, marketing this. Oh, there's me. Good evening. How can I help you? <laughs> I'm w wondering if I can review my design and give feedback. Well, your pop-up worked, Anarag. Here I am reviewing your design and giving you feedback. Frown times up. That's cute. All right. Oh, he's got like a little tiny subscribe and save. So this is a nice way of doing it because in the one that I designed a few days ago, it was this big, massive, even though it was super cute, it was this big, massive pop-up that it was like right in your face. Um, but having one right here is nice. I would wanna see probably like a, well, maybe it doesn't relate to this, but maybe a, a percentage, like an actual like 10%, 5%, but maybe every product might be different. So it might not make sense. Hot new products, great. This is a nice little, so this one is really nice because it, it has a, a red, nice red color, which definitely attracts your eye. So if I was on this checkout screen, I would definitely look over there and you know, be intrigued by whatever this thing is on the side, and I want to read into it. So I like this. It's nice. 
I also like how the um, like the 10%, which is the selected one, is a little bit bigger, a little bit more in focus than the 15 and 20, which is great. Credit cards, all that fun stuff, great. Shipping, lovely. Hopefully that's not your actual address. Great job, your orders have been placed with two super cute puppies or dogs. Take the survey, lovely. Drag experience with a few paws, which is cool. And the wireframes. I always love seeing things like this. So if you go into um, prototype mode back in XD, and by default, you're not gonna see your wires unless you click on an artboard and it'll show you the ones from that artboard to another artboard. But if you command or control A, you'll see all of the wires going from all the different artboards. So that's always fun. And when you have a super in-depth project, you can just do things like this. And an interactive prototype. Awesome, great job, and a rag. Next one we've got is um, Via Hab. I, I'm sorry. Oh, this does not look like it is part of, unless I'm missing something, this may not be part of this challenge, so I'll, I'll take a look at this at some other point, but I'm gonna try to focus on just challenge entries this week. All right, this one is from Ed, who I have seen in Slack. He may even be here in the chat. So this is his Yummers pet store. All right, uh, right off the bat, I love this at the top showing you know, a preview of the project also inside of a real world device. But I would say if you are putting your design inside of a device, make sure that things are not cut off. It does give a little bit of a weird feeling to it, but you know, move that inwards just a little bit, it'll look a lot better. Oh, that was it, okay. Yeah, but over, you know, it's a great, uh, great start. Definitely add in some of your other elements, including your colors, character styles, and some of the various screens that are part of this project. Next, we got Tobias. This is um, Pat Store. It's got little dots on the top, so it might be it. Those letters probably sound different than what I'm saying. No, oh, Ed is there. Hey, Ed. Black Friday deals. I love these illustrations. This is, it seems like this year and last year, there's, there's been this trend of these very flat illustrations and I love them. They're super cool. Got a video, Bear's Grill, love it. It's a nice little, um, I like this banner. It's a very thin banner so you can use it in many different places. Oh, Ed said there's a link at the top. Oh, I missed it, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, these, these very thin banners that you can use in, as a pop-up, you can have it slide up, you can do it wherever. Um, it's not super intrusive and it, it looks really nice. There's this little curve at the side so you can put a button over here, the dodge box, doge box, however you pronounce it. Um, great. Top products, price, oh, you can define your price range, which is cool. Filters are always nice. Uh, Jason's asking, were you supposed to submit our project to a specific spot? Yeah, so we tried something different this time. In the announcements section of our Slack channel, we have here, Sam posted yesterday at around almost 11 a.m. Uh, this form to fill out. So we're gonna try that uh, for the next challenge as well. And uh, we'll see how that goes. If, if we're not getting a lot of entries, then we'll, we'll also scour Behance as well. And of course, this is in addition to me taking a look at some of the entries that come in as the challenge is going on. Awesome. Next, we've got uh, Rukish, Rukish, Names. Names are not good for me. Uh, Rukshia, Rukshika. I, I'm sorry. Um, so this one is called Pet Lime, possibly. Pet, Pet Lime. Pet line. Um, I would say maybe maybe change the font a little bit at the top because it looked like pet lime for a second. Um, I love scripted fonts, but it's sometimes they're a little bit difficult to read. The colors are super cute. You got the pink, they got some blue, shot by pet, really easy to see. Um, these, the dog and the cat may not be necessary up top. They might be a little bit distracting, but you know, it's a cute little touch. Got some top products here. Got the overlay and the pop-up, so some, yep, great. And of course, super cute dogs, which is always fun. Gold membership, always fun to get gold membership. Shopping carts, 
checkout experience with a dog with a birthday hat on. I love this challenge. I think every single challenge we should introduce some sort of cute pet theme. Nice. All right, we're gonna move a little bit quicker because we're uh, we're getting close to the hour. Uh, this one is from Lorena. Go pets, swipe right. All right, dogs eat, cats eat, okay. Swipe right so you can see all the different banners at the top. Oh, it's a Playdate app. Ah, cute. So it's like Tinder for dogs. Very cute. I would use that. Fetch collab. These are cute. My name is Bun. How can I? Ah, so the little pop-up is actually like you're talking to a pet. Interesting. Okay. Subscribe and save. This is a nice little banner. I love the red. It really makes it pop out. And the little gerbils are just, you know, they're gerbils. They're cute. Awesome. Next, we've got Mandikur, Man Maninder. Again, I apologize. Uh, she put together this Footprints app. Super uh, simple logo, which is which is really nice. I love the way these are kind of lined up. So these featured products at the top, you have a large section here, and you have a little bit of a larger one or smaller one here, and then two ones here, which is really nice. It's a, it's a different way to break things up a little bit. Ah, color explorations with little paws. Awesome. Featured products. Sliders. Checkout experience. Nice. Again, I hope this is not your real address. PayPal. Always good to have. The only thing I would say for this one is it looks like there's, just like looking at it, scrolling down, there's a lot going on. I. Maybe if I was going through the whole process, it would make a little bit more sense, but there's things on the left, there's things on the right, it's just going, my eye keeps going back and forth. So maybe I would say probably just like up and down vertically instead of back and forth, but who knows? It's hard to, it's hard to really tell if you're not actually in the, in the checkout experience, so it might work. This is cool. I love the uh, very subtle, there's a, like a white border on the left-hand side. Adds a nice little touch to it. Submenu, chatbot. I'm a sucker for a nice gradient, and that, that's a nice gradient. Uh, Cindy's, can you mask grid inside shape in XT? You can apply object masks if you're if that is what you're asking. Awesome. Special thanks to me. You're welcome. Next one is Rashid. All right, he has an interactive prototype. Let's take a look. I think I did see him in... Uh, I think it was Slack this morning. So let's see. We've got the banners at the top. Whoops. Was that it? No, what happened? It broke. Let's try that one more time. Where can I click? There we go. Hmm. It's not working. There, oh, no. One more time, okay. Let me refresh this. Uh, Kelly's asking, are you still gonna do portfolio reviews after today? Um, during the challenges, I definitely will. So April, starting April 15th, I'll definitely uh, be back doing the challenges and more portfolio reviews, but probably not on a separate day, uh, unless I can find some time, so maybe. Maybe I'll do that separately. So this one doesn't seem to be working very well, so I'm gonna close this for now, but I'll, I'll definitely take a look at this at some point. Uh, this is from Lucas, who put together this mobile experience for... Oh, did he submit... Oh, no, I think it was just two people using the same super cute pug. I love these images. You can definitely tell he took the time to really restructure this for a mobile screen. He kind of shrunk down the footer, but he also put um, the links instead of they were... Instead of horizontally, he put them all vertically, which is nice. Slide in menu. Great. All right. I would say for mobile screens like this, you definitely have a little bit of space to work with on Behance. So I would put probably at least two going across the screen. That way you don't have to have your viewers just scroll down and down and down the page. But this looks good. Shipping. Whoop. Awesome. Uh, this one is, doesn't look like it is part of this challenge. Nope, so I'll skip on that one for now. 
This one is from Marwa, Happy Puppy. Again, super cute. Dog treats for st training or snacking time. Place your order and save 10%, that's always nice. I, I kind of like, I'm kind of digging the um, little blobs in the background. I would say, even though it's not very easy to do now with repeat grids, um, maybe have a few different variations of blobs. And, you know, there may be a time in the not too distant future where you can do things like this within a repeat grid. Um, or in the meantime, you can have the repeat grid and then just have a few extra blobs that are, you know, a little bit different behind the repeat grid. And that, it'll kind of break things up a little bit. But I like the blobs. And actually, somebody posted, I think it was in chat at some point, and also posted on Twitter, there's a blob generator online somewhere. I never knew I needed a blob generator until that moment. Great, awesome. This is from Larissa. This looks like a music app, so this may not be, nope, this is not from this challenge. And I think that's it. Now we're back at mine. So, that may wrap it up for this month's, what month is it? We're in eight, March? March. We're in March, so that'll wrap it up for March's uh, Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. A big thank you to everyone who's been hanging out for the last two weeks. Definitely let us know your feedback, post it in Slack, tweet it at us. Uh, we're gonna be sending out a survey not in the not too distant future, and we'll be back in just a few weeks for the next challenge in on April 15th, I believe. Oh, yeah, Blob Maker. Yes, it's called Blob Maker. Awesome. Uh, Abe is asking, would, be, would you consider doing progressive XD challenges on your YouTube channel, Howard? Maybe. I do want to do more things on my YouTube channel. So, you know, more live streams and things like that. Once I get back to Los Angeles, I'll figure that out. But yeah, a big thank you to everyone who's been joining us, uh, entering, participating. And I, I honestly love seeing all the portfolios just been building up over the last not only just these last two weeks, but also the last few months of these XD Daily Challenges. Big thanks to Marissa for, for providing all the templates, um, Paco and Gus and Lee and Sam and everyone behind the scenes running this thing. And I'll see you all in two weeks with more XD goodness. Thanks for watching. Thanks everyone, bye.